Hello again. Okay, my last video was a while ago now and was made in the direct aftermath of the Charlie Hebdo shootings in Paris. The video was aimed at showing viewers that moderate Muslims cannot simply brush aside the violence occurring in their name and pretending these are lone wolves who are acting outside the teachings of Islam. I presented a very small sample from plenty of examples in Islamic sources where killing critics of Muhammad was tolerated and even ordered by Muhammad himself. Since the video, I've noticed more and more of a tendency among Muslims to play the victim card and claim they are peace-loving people who do not insult other people and therefore expect the same treatment in return. So this video will address the double standards you need to have to make that statement. Let's get going. So, is it true that Islam respects other religions and steers away from insulting others? Well, Muslims will often show you these Quranic verses to highlight their point. Call unto the way of thy Lord with wisdom and fair exhortation, and reason with them in the better way. And do not abuse those whom they call upon besides Allah, lest exceeding the limits they should abuse Allah out of ignorance. So these are both decent verses promoting diplomacy and dialogue and this is what apologetic Muslims will likely show you and hurry you along before you get a chance to dig deeper. The problem we have in the Quran and Islam in general is inconsistency. These diplomatic verses promoting sensible dialogue and banning the verbal abuse of other gods were revealed in Mecca at a time when Islam was still very weak and hence fairly pacifist for tactical reasons. This was before the migration to Medina when Muhammad managed to build an army, hungry for war booty and wreaked havoc in the Arabian Peninsula. So in order to show Islam to be tolerant of others, you must cherry pick the few verses like the two I just mentioned and ignore the other passages in the Quran and numerous hadiths showing intolerance and outright childish ridicule for people who don't hold the Islamic belief or, at the very least, the doctrine of monotheism. Let's read some verses from the Quran. If it had been our will, we should have elevated him with our signs, but he inclined to the earth and followed his own vain desires. His similitude is that of a dog. If you attack him, he lolls out his tongue, or if you leave him, he lolls out his tongue. That is the similitude of those who reject our signs. The Quran, being characteristically ambiguous and non-explanatory, doesn't tell us who this person is that is being compared to the dog. But according to the reasons of revelation, according to the hadiths on this verse, he is either a man called Bal'am bin Abra who lived in the time of Moses, or he was an unnamed man during the time of Muhammad who was granted three wishes and turned his wife into a dog. As always, the links are in the description for anyone who wants to read up further on these wonderful stories. But whether the verse refers to one of these two or not, it's likening someone to a dog, and surely that is offensive. Next, we read verses in the second chapter of the Quran, which talk about a bunch of Jews who didn't adhere strictly enough to the Sabbath. And certainly you have known those among you who exceeded the limits of the Sabbath, so we said to them, be apes, despised and hated. I mean, that kind of sounds insulting and offensive. Those who incurred the curse of Allah and his wrath, those of whom some he transferred into apes and swine. God seems to really like insulting people the way people insult people. Well, isn't that fishy? I'm sure someone will say, no, how dare you, he's God, he can do what he likes. But seriously people, come on. When your God is made out to be a petty bully and you believe these stories, isn't that insulting to a God? Do you really believe he'd be so vengeful to primitive, uneducated humans on one tiny planet? Why does he even turn them into pigs and monkeys? Is he ashamed of that creation? Did he create a beautiful nature except for pigs and monkeys, who are only there so humans can look at them and he can threaten to turn people into them? Let's see what other animals God insults humans with. The likeness of those who are entrusted with the law of Moses, yet apply it not, is as the likeness of the ass carrying books. No, 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 not that ass. Yes, a donkey. The Quran says Jews who don't carry out the laws of the Torah are like donkeys carrying books. I'm sure that Jews today would find that very offensive, especially as they don't implement all the atrocious laws of the Torah. Because if they did, they'd likely be even worse than Islamic State. Now moving on to the Hadith and Sirah. When Muhammad wanted to massacre the Beni Quraiza tribe, he led his army to besiege the fortress of the Jewish tribe in Medina and called out to them, you brothers of monkeys, has God disgraced you and brought his vengeance upon you? When the siege eventually ended, the Prophet of Mercy ordered the beheading of at least 600 men and teenage boys. 
Now, at the end, the monkey insult here doesn't seem to have been the worst thing he did to these people, but nonetheless, it's another insult. Before he even got to Medina, Muslims know one of Muhammad's main enemies who is skeptical of his claims to prophecy as Abu Jahl, which means the ignorant one. This derogatory nickname was given to him by Muhammad, and I've yet to meet a Muslim who actually knows this man's real name, which is Amr ibn Hisham. Again, an insult, and Muslims always refer to this man by the nickname given by Muhammad to ridicule him. So it seems Muhammad can dish out all the insults he wants and still be glorified by Muslims as a perfect human free from error. Why? Because the Quran claims Muhammad is of great character, and thou standest on an exalted standard of character. I mean, obviously there's no way Muhammad wrote the Quran to make himself look good, so don't be so cynical. All this should be more than enough to show why Muslims are employing double standards when it comes to insults. However, knowing how resilient Islamic apologetics are, I'm going to try and preempt another silly argument because I know somebody may bring it up. Someone will probably say, but the people insulted here were not men who were respected figures of a particular religion like Muhammad is. That's why you can't insult Muhammad because we respect him. Well, an insult is an insult, and it should definitely not be coming from the Quran or Muhammad, as it's not something you lead by example with. If he really is a brilliant character, then he should lead by example. But, as you've probably guessed it, even this argument falls flat on its face. Near the end of Muhammad's life, another self-proclaimed prophet of Allah appeared in Arabia by the name of Musaylama bin Habib al-Hanafi. He was also receiving verses for a scripture in the same way Muhammad did and he sent a letter to Muhammad asking for a truce and saying that they can both be prophets from the same God. Muhammad sent back a threatening letter and called him Musaylama the liar. Muslims from that moment on have only used that insulting nickname Muhammad gave him. So calling him a liar was bound to offend Musaylama and all of his devout and loyal followers who believed he was a messenger of God. Why didn't Muhammad or Muslims respect that religion and its prophets? Last but not least, we arrive at the events of Hudaybiyah, a desert oasis where the Muslims were attempting to reach Mecca for a pilgrimage, but were stopped by the Meccans before both sides eventually agreed to a peace treaty. Before the treaty was eventually agreed and signed, one of the Meccans by the name of Urwa came to talk to Muhammad and as part of negotiations downplayed the strength of the Muslims and told Muhammad that his followers weren't loyal and could eventually abandon him. Upon hearing this, Abu Bakr, a very close companion to Muhammad and eventually the first successor, shot back at Urwa by swearing at him and his goddess. And I quote, Suck on a lad's clitoris. Muhammad did not rebuke Abu Bakr whatsoever for his words. This is not only an insult, but clearly foul language, only spoken by the filthy-minded. Just imagine if Urwa had responded in return with equal proportion. His insult would have been, Suck on Allah's dick. Had he responded that way, Muslims would have been infuriated. But Urwa didn't respond in kind and was the bigger man here. He didn't want to stoop down to Abu Bakr's level. If we see the original Arabic for the hadith, we see it written clearly. But the English translation of the hadith has paraphrased the insult into Abu Bakr abused him. This shows that Abu Bakr, highly revered by Sunni Muslims in particular, was too foul-mouthed to be translated. Anyway, on that pleasant note, I end this video. Let me remind you all that all sources are stated below in the description box. Please keep your strong support of this channel coming. Any support on Patreon in particular is highly appreciated and allows me to keep making videos like this. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and share this video with friends and as many people as possible. Follow me on social media platforms where the links are also found in the description box. Until next time, adios.